And I'm going to read a very unusual passage of scripture. And you'll actually think, whatever is he reading this for? But it's in the scriptures. And I'm not going to expound on the people named in the chapter, but I'm going to pick up certain words. So turn with me to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, and we're going to read the first 16 verses. Now, believe me, I am no expert in the pronunciation of these names. So forgive me if I don't pronounce them right. And but just follow. And I want you to remember that we're thinking about our union with Christ. And this little statement appears time and time again as Paul names these individuals. And let's read what the Word of God says. I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Centria, that you may receive her in the Lord, in a manner worthy of the saints, and a sister in whatever business she has need of you, for indeed she has been a helper of many, and of myself also. Greek Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Epanetus, who is the first fruits of a care to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Androchanicus and Junior, my countrymen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who were also in Christ before me. Greet Amphilus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ and statues, my beloved. Greet Apelles, approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Oh, if you're having any no more kids, please don't give <laughs> me that name to pronounce at the dedication, will you? Greet Herodian, my countryman. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, who have labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved Persis, who labored much in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegion, Hermas, Patrobas, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philo Philologus, and Julia, oh, thank God we've got a proper name. <laughs> Nerus and his sister and Olympus and all the saints who are with them greet one another with a holy curse. The churches of Christ greet you. Wow. Well, I trust that you notice those little words that keep popping up look at verse three my fellow priscilla and aquila my fellow workers in christ jesus look at the end of verse seven when he lists some more who were also in christ before me verse eight and plus, my beloved, in the Lord. Verse 9. Urbanus, our fellow worker, in Christ. And then in the end of verse 11. Who are in the Lord. 
verse 12, who have labored in the Lord. Verse 12 at the end, who labored much in the Lord. Verse 13, Rufus chosen in the Lord. Friends, that statement, in the Lord, or chosen in the Lord, it's speaking of the union that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, friends, there are many today who don't know their true identity. But friends, once we believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and received his salvation in our souls, then we can truly say that we are united in Christ. We have a union and a relationship in Christ. Now, last week, we began to look at who we were before believing in Christ. And we thought about our state, and we thought about our position, who we were without Christ. We were afar off. We were strangers. My word. Aliens, those who are without Christ. That's what the Bible talks about and uses those statements. But you know, friends, we found that when we are saved, we are brought in the Lord. You see, we were once in Adam, the first man, the believer, uh, sorry, the unbeliever. We were once sinners, and because we were of Adam, and in Adam, we had sin upon us, which completely separated us from God, enemies of God, under the wrath of God. But thank God, when we were born into the new birth, we are brought into union with Jesus Christ. And so we're no longer viewed in union with Adam, but in Jesus Christ. We no longer are viewed with all the guilt and the shame and the sin that so easily beset us and was part of us as, a, as we were born in sin. But thank God, Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit and through our association with Christ and the fact that we've been brought into Christ, thank God this morning we have not only union in him and with him, but we are partakers of all the benefits that Christ secured for us on the cross. You see, friends, it's a, a union where Christ is the source of our life and strength. We've been singing about it in several of the songs this morning. And you know, friends, it's a wonderful thing that God would ever bring us into union with his Son. But this union that we have in Christ is both a spiritual union and a mystical union. And I just want to consider those words for a little bit this morning. We saw how last week, when we are in Christ, that he is the vine and we are the branches and we uh, drink of him. We, we are uh, in Christ in that way. We look to tell the body and the head, uh, the union that exists through that. And we looked at the union of a husband and wife and how in the same way we are in Christ. But you see, our union with Christ is a spiritual union. It's not a physical union. Our bodies are not connected with Christ's physical body, but rather this union is spiritual 
in its nature. So we mustn't think that because we are united in Christ that our substance, our essence, comes to be absorbed into Christ or assimilated. But friends, thank God, in our union of Christ, there's no intermingling of substance. But friends, it's a spiritual union that was forced, forged by the Holy Spirit of God. You see, folks, I did not bring myself into union with Jesus Christ. I could never bring myself into union with Christ. So with all efforts, whatever they were, it doesn't matter how many attempts we make, we cannot bring ourselves into union with Christ. That's beyond our capability. But you see, Jesus Christ, by a supernatural working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, has worked in our hearts to bring our souls to a place of repentance and faith and experimentally we've been brought into this union with christ it's a union done supernaturally by the spirit of god to unite you and i to jesus christ because it's the holy spirit that comes to our hearts and illuminates us to the truth of the gospel and he works in us. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, he says this, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Hallelujah. You know, friends, he that is joined to the Lord. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 for by one spirit we were baptized into one body whether jews or greeks that's jews or gentiles whether slaves are free and have all been made to drink into one spirit when he says here, by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. He's not speaking about water baptism there, but he's speaking about the new birth. He's speaking of being baptized into one body by one spirit, the spirit of God, into the body of Christ. And we've all been made to drink into one spirit. Paul speaks a lot about our union with Christ. The Apostle John speaks a lot of our union with Christ. And it's interesting, just by way of comment, that in John chapter 14, John's Gospel, the moment our Lord begins to tell his disciples about the Holy Spirit, he begins to tell them then about the union that we have in Christ, because in John 15, goes on about being in the vine and the branches. And friends, the moment that he talks about the Holy Spirit, from John chapter 14, right through to John chapter 17, we realize that it's been a work of the Holy Spirit. We are in Christ. And friends, the union, the work of God is very significant in our lives. And John forges and Paul forges that this is a spiritual relationship. It's not the kind of union that we have in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not the kind of union where Christ has two natures, um, uh, human and divine. 
it's not just about body and soul constituting a human being, but it's a union that is consistent with the nature of the work of the Holy Spirit bringing us into Christ. Friends, spiritually, we are united in Christ. And the wonderful thing is, when we know Christ, it happens to every one of us. Nobody is left out. But our union with Christ is also a mystical union. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why is it mysterious? When you think of the word mystical. Now, friends, let me tell you, we're not thinking of the word mysticism. <laughs> All right? Nothing to do with mysticism. But you see... This salvation, this union with Christ, is a mystery that's presented to us in the New Testament. It had been hidden, but thank God, in his eternal purpose, it's been revealed to us in the scriptures, particularly through and by Christ and his death, and his resurrection, and this is one of the great mysteries of Jesus Christ. I said last week, we read from Ephesians 5 about the marriage ceremony, and we often hear ministers at weddings speaking how a marriage is part of a mystical union that exists between Christ and his church. But friends, when Paul writes about the husband and wife, he said in Ephesians chapter 5, these words, Ephesians 5 verse 32, he said, this is a great, that for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This, he says, is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Hallelujah. You know, friends, it's a wonderful thing this morning. Because just as a husband and wife, two people become the property of each other, the two become one. Friends, the wonderful thing about our union with Christ is this. Our sin, our guilt, the Lord took upon himself. But thank God, he's given us his righteousness. And because he has a perfect righteousness and has credited it to us, that's certainly a mystery. But friends, this spiritual union, our identity is in Christ. You know, folks, this is a wonderful fact so often we take for granted in our lives. Because this identification, this union that exists between the church and Christ, you know, friends, wasn't it Paul, I think, Saul, when he was called Saul, before he became Paul, he came to persecute the Christians in Acts chapter 9. And the question was asked, why are you persecuting me, Paul? That was the Lord. Paul could have said, I'm not persecuting you, I'm persecuting the church. But you see, because the church is identified with Christ in heaven, he wasn't just persecuting the church. He was persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ, the living Christ in glory, because of this union that God has given us in Christ. You know, friends, he identifies 
with you this morning. He identifies with all those who know him. We are in union. But friends, this union in Christ, it's not only a spiritual one, it's not only a mystical one, but it's a personal one. Because, you know, our union with Christ is not just merely on a corporate level. He's in union personally with every child of God that is in union with him. Now, friends, this is very important because there, are, there is a certain denomination, the church in Rome, that teaches that an individual can have no direct union with the Lord Jesus Christ. They teach that a person can only become connected to Christ through the Roman Catholic Church and her sacraments. And they teach that a person can only be in union through that. And that does away with the individual aspect because it just emphasizes the corporate aspect. But friends, every sinner, I want to say this morning, that has been regenerated by the Spirit of God is directly united to Christ and receives their life from Him directly. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Let me read it to you. It says this, Verse 17, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You know, God said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk in them, I will be their God and they shall be my people. So this morning, friends, no one of us is more united to Christ than another. I'm not more united to Christ than you are. And you're not more united to Christ than I am. There are no varying degrees of union. But those who know Christ personally as their Lord and Saviour are all united to Christ in the same way and to the same degree. And because you are in union with him on a personal level, that is why you can go to him directly in prayer. Hallelujah. You can go to him directly in prayer. We don't need, you know, a human mediator, but we go directly to the Father through Christ, because we are in union with him and we come to God through him and by him because we've been accepted in Christ. We've been grafted in, as you put it, our union with Christ. You know, friends, some people get this idea that they're only in the union of Christ when they get home to heaven. But when you, or when you've reached a certain standard of, of holiness or a certain benchmark in your, your life. But friends, I'm not waiting to be joined to grace. Hallelujah. Whenever they read the word of God, I find that I am in union with Jesus Christ today. In fact, that famous scripture... There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, 
but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise the Lord. What's more, friends, brothers and sisters, this morning, it's not just personal. It was completely transformational. Out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his own dear son. Friends, there is nothing of this transformation that man could ever make. But yet, we are changed into his likeness by the Spirit of God. We're being conformed more and more to the image of his dear son. And friends, when we're joined to Christ, all that his is becomes mine. And we're being changed from glory into glory. But also, in the final place, our union with Christ is an indissoluble union. You know, friends, none shall pluck them from my hand. Hallelujah. We are, if we're following Jesus Christ, and we love him with our hearts, thank God we are joined to Christ permanently. You know, friends, there is something tremendous about this. Because, you know, friends, one day, unless Jesus comes first, our bodies will go into a grave fact but you know friends the wonderful thing is this our soul will be with the Lord and yet because Christ has saved you he's not forgotten about the body that's in the grave the shell that we've put down there because when Jesus Christ comes again, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Our, we, our souls and bodies will be reunited, but thank God we'll have an immortal body. Glory to God. That is a tremendous fact. You know, we put people in the grave and obviously for, well, you do, don't you? But, <laughs> but the thing is, God hasn't forgotten about, do you know, friends, there's going to be some graves opening in St. Andrew's churchyard of the redeemed. I'll tell you, friends, the resurrection is not only about our souls, but it's about the body of the believer because we're united to Christ and that bond that exists between the eternal son and the believer is indissoluble Jesus said that no man can pluck them out of my hand and so friends just as my fingers are connected to my hand this morning and my toes are connected to my feet thank god one day the whole body the immortal body will be in heaven you know folks I don't know about you, I've said things that are quite basic this morning, but you know, folks, there's so many Christians, they don't see where they're going. Or they, there's so many other things happening, so much more stuff going on around us and in our lives and in our homes, and 
we don't underestimate how difficult those can be. But sometimes we just need a reminder that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. David said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Glory to God. So friends, Christ in us, the hope of glory, yes. But we are united in Christ. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And so I want you to be encouraged this morning. You know, maybe you're struggling with identity. Maybe you're not. But friends, let me tell you, if you don't unite it to Christ, you're out of Christ. And that's why you need a personal living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's so important. But friends, once you're in Christ, behold, hallelujah, all things have passed away. And all things have become new. So you knew. Hallelujah. Knew. Hallelujah. You might be feeling a bit old in your body, but I'll tell you, in your spirit, you knew. Hallelujah. May God bless his word to our hearts. Let's just pray. I wonder this morning. Is there anybody in the meeting and you, you know that you're not in union with Christ?